you need to have variety in order to survive, in order to strengthen your deck and outwit your opponent. and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game of the tabletop is called Twisted Fables by Dimension Games. It plays two players, but there's a pack where you can play 2v2. And in the game, you're basically going to be a fable from an alternate reality or a different dimension. There's cybernetic characters and fantasy characters alike. And you can choose between Alice, Mulan, or Sleeping Beauty, or Snow White, and battle among each other. It's a deck builder game that basically is like a side-scroller RPG, similar to the game Exceed and your objective is to defeat your opponent and bring them down to zero health. Each character plays differently and has a unique twist to them based on their player board. Let's go and take a look down below. I'll show what's in the game, what it comes with, how it plays, and then whether or not you should pick it up in the description down below if you're interested on Kickstarter. Let's start off with the setup for the game in two-player mode. It's pretty simple. Firstly, you're going to take all of the stacks of the basic cards and then the power two basic cards and the power three basic cards and have them in attack, defense, movement, and wild stacks. Once you set them all up just like this, we'll move on to the characters. You're going to choose one of these characters here, place their board into the space presented here, and then you're going to give them their HP. You're going to give them this symbol here, which says 15. This is basically like a limit breaker. You're going to set their defense to zero, but it also shows you what their max defense is, which is six here. And then of course, this is your power bar. This is what you're going to be utilizing as currency in the game to buy these cards and these ones over here. Now, how are these set up? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. You're going to have three epic cards that you can just set aside somewhere. And then you're going to have three stacks of cards. You're going to have what is called the skill supply decks. And they're set up literally according to this little chart here. So, for instance, you're going to have the pot shot deck, and underneath that will be crack shot, and then overdrive, and sniper shot, and onboard cash. And you're going to set it up just like that. And each stack is going to have their own unique style. And because in the game, as you gather cards, you're going to kind of take from the top. And you'll keep taking these and putting these into your discard pile like a normal deck builder. And then you're going to be able to utilize these after they get shuffled back into your deck. So the cards get better as you move through them. Set aside these tokens here that you might be utilizing for either Mulan or Sleeping Beauty. And then go ahead and start by creating the base or the board of the game. You'll shuffle this deck here and deal out nine of them. And place each character one space away from each other in the middle of the board. Each player should have just the same setup, but some characters are unique. So, for instance, this one right here is going to have a unique poison deck. I bet you can guess who that is. And then over here, Alice, she's a little bit crazy, a little bit mad. So she actually has three different personalities. And then you're ready to begin the game. Go ahead and select a player to go. That player is going to set up their deck by taking three of each of the attack, defense, and movement basic one cards. And then they're going to take one from each of the top of their skill deck and shuffle it up. And then that player is going to go ahead and draw four cards. And that's going to be their starting hand for the first player and only for the first turn. The other player will take the same starting deck, the same three starting cards, shuffle up and draw six cards, which is the amount of cards you're going to start for the rest of the game. Let's go ahead and get deep and in close and personal. I'll show you what some of the characters look like and what they do. I'll explain how a turn works and then we'll come up and we'll continue. Let's go over some of the characters. And the first one here is Red Riding Hood. It's the most basic of characters because it doesn't have any specific special rules other than something that talks about the 2v2 mode and it explains these supply decks. It's going to show you their health and all the stats that you'll need to know about. And of course, you're going to be able to set up the decks in the specific order, all three of them. Let's move on to something a little more interesting, I suppose, like Alice over here. Alice is going to basically function with these three cards here. You're going to have this one here. That's the Queen of Hearts, the Cheshire Cat, and the Mad Hatter. Each of these will give a bonus or a negative to one of your card's skills, whether it be attack, movement, or defense. The combination will depend on the card. The beginning of the game, you'll select one of these, and at the beginning of every turn, you'll be forced to switch your personality or change your card. That will benefit certain cards in your hand and hurt you in other ways. And so you're going to be constantly switching back and forth with these cards throughout the game. How about Sleeping Beauty? Sleeping Beauty is actually really interesting because she starts off, well, 
asleep. And as she takes damage, she's going to gain awake tokens, which are these little baddies right here. And after she gains a certain amount of those awake tokens, what's going to be cool is you flip the character over and now she is awakened. And the awakened character can utilize those tokens to do some powerful bad you know what stuff and then once she utilizes all of her tokens uh well then she's tired and she's actually going to go back to her sleeping side well you get it let's move on to the next one here this one here is mulan and mulan functions as kind of a defender of sorts basically each time your opponent does damage to you you can discard a defense card or a wild card and then she can reduce damage and gain key tokens for the amount that uh, is discarded from the specific card. And so you'll be utilizing these for specific cards in your deck. Over here, Snow White. Snow White actually gets a unique deck of cards. It's called the Poison Apple deck. And as these cards come out and go into your opponent's hand, or deck, I should say, uh, you're, they're going to draw them and take damage. And it gets nasty as time goes on. And of course, her cards are utilizing these at the same time. And then finally, over here, Kai... Kaguya, sorry. This one here is basically going to be a semi-attacker, somewhat defensive unit that has unique twists and turns in her skill deck that changes her style of play. Quite a bit of stuff. Let's also talk about the unique variant to the game over here. The base mode of the game when you're playing, you're simply going to be moving your character around based on when you play a card that says move, attacking a character as long as you're adjacent or you have ranged, and of course you'll be adding defense to your character, and when you add defense you'll simply be moving your bar up. But there's a unique twist to this game as well. In general it's only these nine spaces, but when you add the unique bonus to the game or the unique variable, you can actually flip these all face up, and in the game you can discard skill cards in order to activate these spaces here as opposed to them being their default back end and this provides a lot of additional uniqueness to the game sometimes you'll be able to recover a certain amount of HP to the card and other times you're going to be able to uh, increase your power and other unique things as well a basic turn is going to involve a player drawing six cards from their deck of 12 cards to start the game off. You're going to have defense, movement, and attack, and you can simply play these cards out. Now, you have to follow the rules. If you cannot reach your target, you can't play an attack card, and if you can't move past your uh, a target, then you cannot move past them. Uh, there's also certain cards in the game, like Pot Shot here. This one is going to have a specific requirement on this skill here, and this one says it needs to have an attack card. If you don't have one, you cannot use these cards, but you'll be able to combo, it, combo them if you do. So in this case, if I wanted to, and I'm playing Red Riding Hood here, I would simply go ahead and play a defense and a defense, which increases my defense up to two to the max of six. I could then go ahead and play a movement and move my character adjacent to this character here. And then if I have another movement, I would be forced to move again but I can utilize these here to buy certain things. Like I said before, if I happen to have a attack card, so if I happen to have that in my hand and this one as well, I could simply play an attack card, attach this pot shot to it, then I'm going to do what this card says. It's a range one, damage one, plus the uh, damage on this thing here, which means it's two damage. And as long as I'm adjacent to the character with range one, I can hit that character and damage them, removing health from them. If I was over here, it'd need to be range two, range three, range four. I think you get the idea. After you've played all your cards, they're going to go to the discard pile and you can go ahead and buy from the shop. Let's show you the shop. This is what a single shop looks like for one player. They're going to get this, all this stuff to choose from to buy, and the cost will be in the top right-hand corner of every card, and you can choose to buy them with your power. Power comes from any of these basic attack cards, whether they be one, or whether they be two, or even three, and as long as they're not attached to skills, you can utilize them for their value. So for instance, if I played all of these cards on my turn, that's gonna score me one, two, three, four, five, and five total to buy cards on here. So if I wanted to, I can spend two here and I can spend three here and I would take these two cards and put them in my discard pile. And whenever I discarded my entire deck and hand, I have to reshuffle basically, I would then be able to get these cards back and utilize them and they can be quite powerful. But not only that, they can also choose to buy any of these three sets here from the top only. So if I wanted to, I could buy this one here and then another two here and then I could spend one and buy one of these guys here. 
Another unique thing about buying stuff is during the turn in which you buy cards, if you run into any twists, these will actually come out and benefit your character as a passive ability that stays in front of them. It doesn't go into your hand or anything, it just sits next to you, and you utilize that skill whenever necessary. Read the card and it will determine that for you. And that's pretty much it as far as the buying phase goes. The last thing I can talk about here is when your character takes a certain amount of damage, these cards are going to pop up. And when these cards pop up, uh, because you've gotten a certain threshold limit, so in this case here with Red Riding Hood, if you happen to have your health go all the way down to 15 or below 15, this is going to trigger allowing you to choose one of these cards and allowing you to place one into your hand and then utilize it for the rest of the game by discarding it and getting it back the next time. And these provide serious benefits in the game. After you went ahead and purchased one of these cards here, or many cards, depending on how many cards you were able to purchase, then that's going to end your turn and it's going to go back and forth. And once a player hits zero health, that's it. The game's over and you win. Dimension Games has amazing artwork in their games. I've seen Deep Madness and that game is beautiful in my opinion. I like dark and gritty and very, very like detailed artwork. And that game is amazing. And so is this one as far as artwork is concerned. The game has a ton of beautiful illustrations. The characters are so unique, but still memorable. And I also have the nostalgia of the characters. I know which character is Sleeping Beauty or which character is the Red Riding Hood from the cards and artwork. And also from how they play. Each of the characters functions very differently and has its own unique twists and turns when you're choosing cards. You don't simply want to go one way with any of these characters. You need to have variety in order to survive, in order to strengthen your deck and outwit your opponent. This is a 1v1 game that can be played 2v2, but it is a head-to-head -head deck building game that also functions as a 2D side scroller, kind of like Street Fighter and those type of games from the past, kind of brought to life in a board game. It is aggressive and it has a bit of luck as well because certain requirements need to be met. In order to attack somebody with attack cards, you have to have the range or be in range. And if you're not, those cards can't be utilized as power or to attack. So making sure that you kind of flush your deck out is great. And sometimes you're just not going to get the luck that you need in order to satisfy the requirements that need to be met. Other times you'll need to utilize your movement farther than you'd like when playing certain cards. And that might put you in a weird predicament, but you'll need them in order to gather that power to buy the cards in the shop. Another thing that's interesting too about this game is you're purchasing cards from three different stacks, not including the basic cards, and as you purchase more, your deck becomes stronger and you start to see the difference in the different characters and how they play. My favorite character is, of course, Alice, and how she functions is very interesting. She's kind of got like a World of Warcraft type stance dance where you're playing as a Fury Warrior. One minute you're attacking devastatingly, and another time you and you also have your defense lowered. Another time you have strong defense, but you're slow at moving, and so on and so forth. And you kind of have to change according to what your hand is and hope to better yourself by choosing the different faces of Alice in the game. Then you have a character like uh, Sleeping Beauty with the availability to uh, start giving out apples and corroding an, a player's deck, making it impossible for them to keep the cards that they want in their hand and situate their deck to form the deck, the one that's 10 cards, you draw five and then draw the other five, that kind of thing. It actually stops that kind of style of play. It's very unique, very interesting as well, because I haven't seen a lot of decks that do that. Some put stuff in, but this one really likes to hammer it home. And then of course you've got like Mulan and um, Tatsuya, um, in which they're basically able to either be extremely aggressive or defensive, and they have kind of unique and interesting discard effects that will allow them to either draw cards and protect them, or simply go out on the offensive and do a bunch of damage. Being able to awaken uh, characters is very interesting as well. I think Snow White is one with the apples, not, not Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty is one that wakes up if I said that, I don't know. But regardless, I think you get what I'm saying with this game. It feels like you're battling with those specific characters and the decks function very well in accordance with the characters. 
The stories in the game are great too. In the rulebook itself, it has a ton of additional storyline for each of the different characters, and they kind of discuss the alignment of the character, what their backstory is, the advantages and disadvantages, and the tips of the different characters, and kind of gives you that all-in-one idea of how it plays before you even sit down to play it, so you can determine what your character uh, you want to play is, not just based on the artwork, but the play style as well. Uh, what's here is six different characters. I don't know if they're going to have more or not, but they all function very close to each other. The games are really, really tight. Of all the games I played, all of them were extremely close, and it was any person's game of those last couple turns, which just makes a game like a deck builder feel, feel really good when you actually have that moment where you might satisfy the victory condition or you were one turn off from victory. And of course the extra variance to the 2v2 mode. I haven't played it. I don't have the pack so I don't know how that goes so you'll have to figure that out for yourself. But as far as the different like terrain pieces and how you flip over the cards there and they have unique little abilities that you'll actually refresh when you get rid of these guys. All the artwork is excellent. All the cards do different things and they function differently and they're all faced up so you can see them and decide what's best on your turn. It just gives you more options which is great. If you like a deck builder, that's also a competitive game where you're moving your characters around the board, where you're attacking each other, where you're defending, and where you're trying to manipulate your deck to become the best that it possibly can be, you're going to enjoy this game. If you don't like a very aggressive competitive game that has a little bit of luck involved in certain choices that you may or may not want to make in order to get other choices, then maybe it's a pass for you. For me, this game's a lot of fun. It reminds me of Exceed. I prefer this one over Exceed, specifically just because I like how it feels with the characters, but I haven't played all of the Exceed characters so I can't say for certain that these are all better than all of those, but at least the ones I have played, I enjoy this, this style more. If you like Exceed, this is also something that you should consider taking a look at to determine if you want to pick it up or not. But for me, this is a hard yes. This is a very good game. I think you guys are going to enjoy it quite a lot. And I like all of the quality as well as the artwork. It all just works for me. All right, sorry, Kaguya. I did, I don't know what the heck I called you, but it wasn't Kaguya. This, this okay, now, now that you know. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell button so you can see more videos that I produce every day or at least I try to. And you can also join us on our Discord. Join us on our live stream every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook. And don't forget to go ahead and join us on Patreon, like our Facebook and all that good stuff there. I really appreciate anything you guys do, even just liking this video and commenting to let me know what you think, what any improvements I can make. I It's all welcome and relevant. All right, guys, I'm tired. It's been a long day. Hope you have a good one. And as always, I look forward to battling you in an alternate universe, utilizing fantasy char characters from Twisted Fables next time.